In this final part we're gonna color our shield and then finish everything up. Therefore we're gonna unhide our high poly mesh and hide all low poly parts. With one of our wooden high poly parts selected we're gonna create a new material. and Name it something so you can keep it apart from the other materials. Then we're gonna go into vertex paint mode. In the menu in the top you can now choose dirty vertex colors in the paint menu and that will color your selected part into a grayish tone. Then go back into object mode, select the next wooden part and choose the same material from the drop down. Now we're going to create a new input node, an attribute node. Connect the color output of the attribute node with the base color of the BSDF shader and choose as name call. Now we're going to do the same as before, so we're going to go into vertex paint mode, going to use dirty vertex colors and then repeat this for all the wooden parts. While I'm going to do that in the video, I shortly want to talk about vertex colors because I know for some of you this is something unfamiliar. Vertex colors is a way of coloring a mesh without using textures. And what you are doing is you assign each vertex a color. Now obviously we can't see the color of a single point because we see the faces. The color of the face is calculated by interpolating the colors of the surrounding vertices. If you are interested in learning more about vertex colors, let me know in the comments. But for now, let's go back to coloring our shield. Okay, we have now assigned this material to all the wooden parts and we have colored them all with dirty vertex colors. So next, we're gonna add a color ramp in between the two nodes. And here we can change the color of our wood. For a stylized look, I always like to go with a bright saturated colors. You can still change that color um, later on, but now we're going to do the same for the metal part. Therefore, select it and create a new material. Then we basically do exactly the same as before with the wooden part. So switch into vertex paint mode and choose dirty vertex colors from the paint menu to get those highlights. And now we're also going to add an attribute node again, connect it to the base color of the shader and type call for the name. I'm also going to add a color ramp again so I can make the metal darker by moving the left handle closer to the middle. Now again we're going to repeat the same for the small metal parts. When we add the dirty vertex colors to the small metal parts they will look rather white. This is because we didn't sculpt them. Just leave them as they are and we're going to paint over them later in texture paint mode. Assign the same material to them as the metal ring has and select the handle next. Create a new material for this one too, name it and add dirty vertex colors. Add an attribute node and connect it as before and change the color with a color ramp. Now we're going to hide all the high poly parts except for the high poly handle and also going to unhide the low poly handle. With the low poly handle selected, create a new image texture node and then click on new to create a new image. As with the normal map, I'm going to go with a size of 2K. In the image view on the left, you can choose the newly created image from the drop down. And then first select the high poly mesh, then while holding shift to low poly and go to the baking settings. Change the bake type to diffuse, disable direct and indirect lighting and then click on bake. Now we're going to repeat this step for the other parts. Unhide the high poly and low poly and hide the rest of the mesh. Make sure to have the image node of the diffuse texture selected in the low poly material. Select first the high poly mesh, then with shift the low poly and bake. Also make sure to not clear the image when baking, so keep clear image unchecked. Repeat this for all the other parts. When this is done, you can connect the image node output to the base color of the shader and take a look at your low poly shield. The small metal parts still don't look great, so let's select them and switch into texture paint mode. Hover with your mouse over the gray part of the metal ring and press S to select the color. I forgot to select the small metal parts, so I had to switch to object mode, select the metal parts and then back to texture paint mode. Before you start painting, change the bleed in the options to 16 pixels. Now when you paint over the mesh, it will add a border around the UVs in the image. Next we need to add some more detail to them. Pick a darker grey color and then draw around the outside of each part. If you press F, you can toggle the two main colors. I use this feature to draw alternating darker and lighter lines, emphasizing the edges of the metal part. Let's go back to the shading tab. You probably already have seen that the BSCF shader is not only taking a base colors input, but has a lot more options. We want to make use of some of these options to further define the look of our shield. Change the values of roughness and metallic to see how it's affecting the object. 
Instead of defining one value for the whole object, we can create grayscale image textures defining these values. Let's start by creating a new image texture node and adding a new image. Name it, leave the same size as before and leave the color black. As you can see, when black is picked, all channels have a value of zero. That means currently the whole shield is not metallic. If we want parts to be more metallic, we have to paint them white or light gray. Go back to texture paint mode and make sure the black metallic texture is selected in the settings on the right. Now change the color to white and the brush things to one. Paint over all the small metal parts and when you're finished, change into object mode to select a metal ring and go back to texture paint mode. Paint also over this one so it's completely white. Now back into shading, take a look how the roughness and specular values are playing together and changing the look of our object. Remember to write down the combination of values that look good. Now, values close to zero are dark in the texture map, while values close to one are light. Create a new image texture node and a new image for the specular values. Go into texture paint mode and paint it in the values you like. Before I started painting, I saved all my images because I haven't done it before. Now we can select the specular image and paint over it. I will leave the image black except for the wooden parts. Here I'm going to use a dark gray and highlight the top and the bottom parts of the wood just a little bit by adding a lighter gray. Switch to the shading viewport to see the results and to make sure the result is what you would like it to be. In the end, save the image and create one more image texture node for the roughness. As before, create a new image and switch into painting mode. I will paint the parts nearly white, make them quite rough, and then add grey to the flat metal and wooden parts. Again here, just look how the painted texture is affecting the object and paint over it again if necessary. If you're really patient, you can add a lot of detail with these maps and make your object look really great. I'm not really a patient type, so I'm gonna leave it like this and only add some more detail to the diffuse texture, because right now it is looking a bit boring. I'm gonna add different brown tones to the wood and then darken the spaces between planks and also to the edge of the metal ring. I'm also gonna highlight all the edges a bit more, emphasizing the stylized look. Before we add the final colors, let's go to the layout tab and jo join all the parts of the shield together so we can paint easier. Therefore select all the low poly parts while holding shift and then press ctrl J. Now we have one object, so when we go back into texture paint mode, we can paint on all of it. Click on the small mask icon in the top left corner of the paint view and select the four wooden planks by hovering the mouse over them and pressing L. Now select the mask mode on the left and create a new image texture in the settings on the right. With this done, draw in between the planks and redraw all the dark lines of the wood on the front side of the shield. You can also add some lighter lines on the wood itself. We won't be able to draw on the now dark parts later on, so when we draw over the shield with a normal brush and then remove the mask, the dark parts of the mask won't be affected. So when you're finished, switch back to the brush. Then choose a nice color. I'm gonna go with a light blue and add a nice pattern to your shield. I'm just gonna go with a actually kind of boring 
triangle look. Uh, if you want, you can add dragons, whatever. Um, I'm just gonna start with a small brush and first do the outline and then with a bigger brush doing the main shape. As soon as this is done, we can go back into the mask mode and remove the mask and then we're finished. So I hope you liked this tutorial and I hope um, it was good to understand and easy to follow. And for everyone who's still watching to this very end, I wanted to thank you all. I'm super happy to reach 700, or okay, at least 700 subscribers. And I wanted to thank you all for the nice comments and also for the really helpful feedback. So it really keeps me going. Thank you.